Good morning all. Time to test the Reggie on my printed circuit board. This printed circuit board, um, which was very kindly made by JLC PCB. So I've got the regulator on there. It's the Holtec HT7550 5 volt regulator. And today I'm going to test it. I'm going to make sure it's producing a 5 volt output. I'm also going to check it for stability because regulators, well, by their very name, uh, regulate so they employ a feedback control loop and as we all know feedback control loops can be stable but they can also be unstable so regulators generally um, suggest that you put capacitors on the input and the output to improve stability now you can have regulators um, that go unstable if you don't have enough capacitance you can have regulators that go unstable if the capacitance has too high an ESR equivalent series resistance. You can even have regulators, and I believe it's uh, the older L LDO types, that can go unstable if you have too low an ESR. So some of them, if you're going to use uh, ceramic capacitors, require that you put series resistors um, in series with those capacitors. Anyway, this one I think will be fine with these two tantalums. Let's give it a try. So this is the Reggie I'm using, the Holtec HT75XX, while well, I'm using the 7550 5 volts, I'm using a SOT89. Uh, low power consumption, that's really good. The um, Reggie I was using before regulator was the LP2950 that had a self-consumption, it itself consumed, 75 microamps. This one seems to imply that the current consumption on no load is 2.5 microamps. That's really good. Uh, low voltage drop, so it's an LDO, uh, low dropout, yeah, low dropout. Low temperature coefficient, doesn't wander around much if it gets hot. This one isn't going to get hot. High input voltage, up to 24 volts, and of course I've got 5 volts out. But this isn't very good. Output voltage accuracy tolerance, plus or minus 3%. That's awful. The LP2950 was plus or minus 1%, and if you've got the A version, half a percent. Right, I'm going to solder a couple of wires onto the um, 5 volt and 0 volt points here. That's where the capacitor goes, 100 nanofarad, straight across the uh, microcontroller. These are the power pins on the left-hand side, conveniently near the edge of the board, so I can have these wires sticking out. This is the circuit. The bit that we're interested in is this diode coming in, because that's the anti-reverse polarity diode. Uh, the Reggie itself, I'm drawing on top of my board, aren't I? The 4.7 microfarad output capacitor, the 1 microfarad input capacitor, that is it. The circuit, four components. We're going to test it right now. Right, my output wires are on, and they're on the left, obviously. Uh, nothing wrong with a bit of left-handedness. So we've got 5 volts, 0 volts, that's going into this DMM. Right, my incoming power supply is 12.6 volts. It's coming from this lead acid battery. I've got no fuse, which is a, a bit dodgy. But as we know, these crock clip leads are rubbish and they will burn out at the merest hint of a short. So I've got to go on the ground there. I've got to get my arms out of the way of the DVM so you can see them. Uh, VCC is there. There it is. 12.62 volts going in. 4.92 volts coming out. It's a little bit low. Um, oh, why is that suddenly shooting down? Probably a bad connection. 4.91 volts. Yeah, so 5%, uh, 1% would be um, oh, 5 millivolts or 50 millivolts. So that would be 4.95. So it's looking like about 2% low. Okay, but it is mm, around 5 volts. That's the first test. Not too bad. Right, next up, the silly scope. Um, I've got my 12 volts going in there, 12.6. Uh, 5 volts per division, so it's 5 volts off the ground, which I've put quite low down. And that looks pretty clean. That's at 1 millisecond per division. Let's just wind it up. Uh, 50 mic, 20 mic, 10 mic, 5, 2, 1 microsecond per division. I can't see any noise 100 nanoseconds per division no there's nothing on there that's completely clean and stable now of course that's off load there's no load on there when the microcontroller goes on there it's going to take about 
500 nano amps. Now we can simulate that, uh, no, 500 micro amps, sorry. We can simulate that with um, a 10K resistor. So I'm gonna solder a 10K resistor across the output to simulate the microcontroller being on there. The other thing that the circuit has on it is an LED. Now that takes about 10 milliamps. So what we can do is if we can pulse an LED with a resistor on and off on that output and see if that causes any uh, disturbance in this output and whether or not it causes any ringing. That's what we're really looking for. Right, you can just about see the uh, 10K resistor I've soldered on there on the output. That simulates the load. It's a very tiny load, about um, 500 microamps. Yes, that's correct. 500 mil uh, half a milliamp, in other words. So let's put uh, 12 volts on the input. Make sure I don't touch the uh, lead acid connections together. And no, I wasn't expecting any nonsense from that. One millisecond per division. All positions on the scope looks clean as a whistle. That's what I was expecting. Now the LED load. Um, it's going to be difficult holding these probes to put 12 volts in and switch an LED on and off at the same time. So I'm thinking this um, candle LED. I'm running it off 5 volts there. And you can see if I... Oh, can you? Yeah, if I waggle that you can see that it kind of goes from um, permanently on to modulated, pulse width modulated at about 50% the minimum. So that's an LED switching on and off. That's going to be perfect. I'll solder that or just attach it to uh, this output. Right, that's really interesting. Um, the 5 volts looks relatively stable. I've moved it down so that you can see it. But look at these disturbances when the LED turns on and off. Let's change the time base on those. Um, so you can see that there's ooh, about 2 volts of um, positive uh, disturbance so it goes up from 5 volts to about 7 volts when the LED mm, switches off presumably and we've got about oh, about one and a half volts of negative disturbance so yeah there's quite a lot of um, voltage swing when that LED turns on and off now I'm not sure how much current it's drawing I suppose I could measure that Right, so measuring the current that this LED is drawing, quite a lot. Uh, 45 milliamps, presumably when it's fully on. And then it calls, of course it goes into its pulse width modulating thing. But yeah, 45 milliamps, 42 milliamps. So it's taking, I mean my LED um, on the charge controller is only going to draw about 10 milliamps. So this is taking four times as much. So it's not very indicative of the load that I'm going to put on it. But yeah, that did disturb the 5 volts quite a lot. Uh, oh, that's not right. <laughs> Switch that to volts, 12.6 volts. Right, blue LED on there now. You can see it there. I can just push it to switch it on and off. And you can see that there are some disturbances on that 5 volt output. Uh, positive disturbance is looking like just under a volt now. This is blue LED with a 150 ohm resistor. It's exactly what's going to be on the charge controller. Negative disturbance is similar actually. It's just under a volt. Now, is that tolerable or do I need some more capacitance on there? Uh, I don't know. So I'm just trying again um, with a faster time base. And if I disturb that, it looks like it's about half a division and it's 200 microseconds to, per division. So it only disturbs the power supply for about 100 microseconds. I don't know whether that would be enough to cause trouble, would it? Now I never did this test on the LP2950, there it is on my gumstick version of this device. Um, that had a 3.3 microfarad uh, capacitor, this one's got a 4.7, although actually I measured it before I soldered it on and it was only about 2.8 because of course capacitors are rated for sort of plus percentage, minus percentage and the minus percentage can normally be pretty huge, up to 50% of the actual rated value uh, or even more possibly. Uh, okay, so um, this one, yeah, I mean, this one was perfectly well behaved, so I don't know uh, whether this is any different in terms of its sort of transient response, but maybe I'm worrying too much and it's not going to be a problem. The other thing, of course, here, um, on this one, I didn't have a 150 ohm resistor. I could always increase that value to have the LED put a little bit less load on that capacitor, that power supply, uh, so I could go to 220, 330. I mean, actually, on this one, I put a 4K7 on, because it's all I had, and it's still perfectly visible. I'm certainly not going to do that. But yeah, I could raise it to 220, 330 ohms, 
just to put a little bit less strain on that uh, power supply capacitor. So what does the data sheet for the HT7550 say? Well, nothing about capacitors, nothing about type or ESR. It just has these application circuits which show 10 microfarads input, 10 microfarads output. But clearly you can see from this that you don't need 10 microfarads input and output for stability. It doesn't oscillate with one microfarad input, 2.8 I think I measured it at, uh, microfarads output. Even when I put my uh, LED load on and switch it on and off, it doesn't oscillate. Yes, it dips a bit and it grows a bit and it takes a while to recover. But um, yeah, nothing about capacitors on this data sheet at all. Um, so yeah, I'm happy with that. Um, those tests I think show that the circuit is, the power supply circuit is at least stable. Um, and it's not going to go into oscillation or anything nasty like that. Yeah, there's a little bit of a power dip and uh, a voltage gain, sorry, a voltage dip and a voltage gain when this load is uh, switched on and off. But um, I'm hoping that the microcontroller can tolerate um, a little bit of overvolt and a little bit of undervolt. We will see when I put all the rest of the components on here and power it up. Cheerio.